Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of AWP Anything Wrestling Podcast. Thank you once again for joining us on another edition. We are back here again with another quarantine edition of AWP. Today we have a very, very interesting topic, but before we get to that, guys, how you doing? Great, uh, as usual. What about you, Kamish? Uh, er- everything grand and spectacular. Being in the far confined walls of your home, but amazing. Well, if, as, long, as long as you have entertainment and food, you're fine. Well, speaking <laughs> of, if you're finding, if you're having some trouble trying to entertain yourself, always remember you can catch all your favorite WWE programming only on the WWE Network for a non-negotiable but very reasonable price of just only nine ninety nine. Well, guys, uh, I'll go on record to say we have a very, very interesting episode. This is actually the second edition of the What If series where we fantasy book uh, WWE storylines from the past and present. And today's topic, especially for the commish, has been a very interesting one. Well, there you go. You can probably guess by that laugh. Um, It seems like since WrestleMania 36... Uh, Kamish has been very intrigued with that John Cena versus Bray Wyatt match where they teased, you know, John Cena being heel and joining the NWO. And it seems like more than half the WWE Universe kind of went into fantasy booking mode of what, what it would have been like or who would have been a part of John Cena's, you know, faction uh, if he was to ever turn heel. Which then sparked up the idea of how we would fantasy book a John Cena heel turn anywhere throughout his career. Um, so, I guess, uh, should we just get right into it? Well, I mean, but before we get into like our own ideas of how we've all thought of what John Cena would be like as a heel again and all this, I, I would like to propose the question to each of you, whoever wants to jump in and answer it. Do you think it will it would be a successful career move for John at this point to turn heel or whenever in time he did? Mm. At at this point, um, I I think you can get away with it. He's not the centerpiece anymore. Um, at least not that he was, and so I I think you could you'd be more likely to get away with it uh, now. Um, I I think that earlier on, it's possible, but you you'd have to have been very very selective and very careful with when you did it and how you did it to really uh, not shoot him in the foot. You know, Dan. Quite ironically, I'm kind of thinking the opposite because in my mind, if John Cena was to turn back then. Uh, keeping in mind that was still the ruthless aggression era or the last few you know years of it um, I'll just go on record to say booking back then was a little bit more stronger than it is now I feel like now they would it would be so hokey and so laughable and so you know uh, satire but that it, you really wouldn't take it seriously um, but I don't know, very risky moves. You know, some of the top stars have done it and it's worked out. Others have tried it and it didn't work out. But uh, I, I think with proper booking, John Cena, he would be able to pull it off. Now, I, I, will, I will say that I think based on John's personality, it's also a gamble because, um, I mean, we've, I think we, we've seen him in a couple of a couple of movie roles where he plays sort of a straight-laced, very serious, kind of intense character. Yeah. Uh, but his personality, which is what he likes to show in, in the ring, uh, I don't think is as suited. But he, I think that that's more how he would have to be. But if he tried to be, uh, he tried to show his own personality, I don't know how, how well it would go over. Well, I mean... Have you guys seen him in that one movie uh, with Tina Fey and Amy Poehler, Sisters? No, I didn't know he was in that one. <laughs> Try to imagine him trying to be a, an entirely different character out of himself. It, it's the weirdest shit, but if it's done right, it would work. And I guess that's what I'm trying to say, is that uh, knowing WWE, especially now, or at least the creative and the bookers, uh-huh. 
I'm I'm not I I I wouldn't put all my eggs into that basket. Well, what well, basket? I mean, forty percent of the basket's been fired. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Too soon. I mean, I don't know if you guys have seen that meme, but do you guys uh, side side tangent for just one second? Do you guys think that Dean Ambrose's heel turn would work right now? Oh, because of the corona. Yeah. Now let's keep in mind: if you take the basket and you put John Cena in it. <laughs> You've got a twenty five percent chance <laughs> that his heel turn's gonna 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 work. But then if you take Bray Wyatt and you add him to the mix That's what, a thirty three percent chance that it'll happen. Exactly. But but if you take my seventy five percent chance Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, let's move on. I can't remember the rest of the promo. I need to remember that promo. I really do. <laughs> well, I think you would only have a 33% chance of remembering it. Yeah. Anyway, um, well, since we all know the topic at hand, um, I don't know any volunteers. Does anybody want to go first? Kamish, do you want to jump right in or do you want to sort of... Uh... Well, here's the, okay, so I'll, I'll go first. Um, but I, I don't want to take away... Because I remember you and I had an off-air conversation about this. Yeah. But I, 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 I'm I more than happy to hear yours. But I, I'm going to throw my new one that I came up with uh, before the episode started. Okay. So I've had this concept ever since we saw the Firefly Funhouse match. And the first thought, I'm like, wow, what if John Cena finally turned heel? What would happen? What, what exactly would be the ripple effect in the WWE universe? And I could go as far back as, like, maybe in 2014, you know, when he first faced Bray. Or what if we went further back into 2009 during his greatest rival, one of my favorite rivalries, uh, with Randy Orton. Interesting. Or, or let, let, let's just continue it from today. Like, say the match affected him so badly because the effect that we've gotten from The Fiend and Bray Wyatt is he tends to affect every opponent he has, right? Yeah. Like, you stated it that he's been able to, like, bring out the real Seth Rollins again, you know, uh, Prince Balor and Finn Balor. Yeah. And uh, uh, Daniel Bryan, like, the indie yeah. wrestler Daniel Bryan. Yep. And also the truest existence of the a-hole that we all know and love in The Miz. Yes. So... What is, what is John Cena's true inner demon? What is his true like inner working? Is he really in the ideal effect that he's the doctor of thugonomics? Like, is that really him? Is he still in the mindset that he's the prototype? Or, or, or what if he became the fiend's prototype? Now, bear with me, Ellis. Imagine John Cena was... He comes out in the middle of, we'll say the money at the bank match. That's, I don't know how it's still happening, but <laughs> apparently we're getting it in the corporate office of WWE. Oh, it's going to be, it's going to be something. I'm anticipating that this is their, their uh, <laughs> next attempt at trying to do the boneyard match kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So imagine like we're having that match and, uh, who, who, give me one of the guys who's qualified. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember. I, I don't either, unfortunately. I think well, Daniel Bryan qualified for the match. Oh, yeah, that's yes. right, he did. Hashtag. Okay, but, but, yeah, obviously we know who didn't make the match, even though they should have. Let's just say Daniel Bryan's all the way at the top of the corporate office. He's He's right there, ready to get the briefcase. I don't know where they're going to hang it from, but let's just say he is, right? All of a sudden, you don't hear, like, the, you know, my time is now. You don't hear that playing. For some odd reason, like, he gets ambushed by someone, like, just dressed in black or some shit. Or someone, like, uh, 
like a, a mystery man, right? And this person, because we all saw Brock Lesnar climb the ladder and take the briefcase. Let's say this person takes it. Yeah. Takes the briefcase and makes it his own. He unmasks himself and it's John Cena. Now, why would John Cena need the money in the bank briefcase? It disappears, right? A few months go on. They start investigating what's going on. They start making a big deal. All of a sudden, you hear the Firefly Funhouse theme. You have Bray. Oh. Just as in. You're like, hey, kids. What if I told you that your favorite uh, hustle, loyalty, and respect superstar is now under my control? What if I control the outcome of, of, of this one person? So John Cena has now become a puppy to Bray. And whatever Bray says or whatever the Fiend says goes. Maybe he can use uh, John Cena to do all his dirty biddings the whole time. Like make him cash in the money in the bank for Bray, get the universal title if he's unsuccessful at getting it from Braun this next month. Just imagine John Cena being a puppet, no matter what now. But he does all the evil things that the Fiend wants him to do. Not that Bray cares, but whatever the Fiend says goes. Like, imagine how dark and sinister you can make John Cena be. Yeah. To do his bidding. Because even John never knew what he wanted to be in his whole career. Whether he wanted to be a muscle bodybuilder, a rapper, or, as we all know him now, Mr. Hollywood or Hustle, Loyalty, Respect. I know my like my booking is a little short, but I can just imagine like Bray Wyatt and the Fiend having full control of John the whole time, and just making him do whatever he says. And it it would never please the fans, so they would obviously boo him. He would be the heel, because honestly, technically Bray Wyatt's supposed to be booked as a heel. Yeah, he's not a baby face. He's a he's he's a full blown heel. Right, but. People obviously love the gimmick of The Fiend and how obviously he took out John Cena. But you make, you hate John Cena so bad that he just completely disregards hustle, loyalty, and respect at this point. He's just under my control. Interesting. I would book him that way for almost the whole year until, like, let's say Royal Rumble, like, because everyone wants to see a rematch between these two. And you get the clicking that, like, maybe John's figuring it out again. Like, oh, this isn't who I am. You know, I'm all about hustle, loyalty, and respect. But for some reason, I'm, un- I'm under this mind control. You can even book it for a WrestleMania 37 rematch. Third one. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. That, 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 that's what I would do. I almost feel like in that situation, uh, I feel like you almost, I don't know. I don't know if I would do that. Uh, I, my, my suggestion was that perhaps they run a, another Firefly Funhouse match with these two, and it brings something uh, full circle. It brings it full circle somehow, but it would essentially end up being John kind of countering it or you'd have to just kind of end on a like a <laughs> I, I i release you kind of thing <laughs> but you're you're adding on to mine right this isn't yours well it, you know it, yeah yes but in okay. a way it would, it would have tied into mine oh right, well let's hear i want to hear yours well so the my thought process was tied to was tied to again to Bray. Um, I, I don't know if there really was a good time, like outside of the rise above hate, um, storyline where I feel like they, yeah, for lack of a better term, uh, I'm not going to say it, where they really just chickened out. They didn't commit. They just had John overcome Kane and then move on. Um, 
I don't I don't really know if we follow his original career trajectory if there's really a better point than now to pull that trigger. Um but my thought process is that so he disappeared, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So where is John? Where is he gone? Shit, I would even do some some mini uh, promos with John uh, tied to the Funhouse dim- dimension, where now he starts to like, like, like we have like a, a thirty second segment. He he pops up on screen. We go, oh shit, it's John, and he again has to. He is faced with some aspect of his his psyche, or he's being tormented by one of the, by the puppets. And by the end of the things, that then we have him manipulated into into a heel. The way I sort of envisioned him in yours was sort of uh, like a Deacon Batista, like a dark Deacon Batista for oh. Bray. <laughs> but um, I think that you essentially either still treat him in that sort of role where he's sort of the sort of the, the dark minion, mm. or or Bray just cuts cuts him loose, says, "Go, go, my child." <laughs> and so, so John gets a gets another run, and you change his gear. Uh, you have to. I, I don't know if you put any sort of like headgear or mask on him because I feel like that would come across a little a little weird. Um, if we're like, oh, okay, well, it's John Cena, but he's wearing like a knockoff fiend mask. I probably I probably wouldn't do something like that, but you just you send him back into into the into the world and uh, let's see who is it. So Bray's going after Braun, yeah, right. Now. Yeah, maybe maybe Dark Cena goes after um, the other one, uh, Drew. Maybe you see Cena versus Drew because I don't think we've ever seen that. But uh, you you obviously can't have you can't have John beat. Drew, mm-hmm. but you could use John Cena as a tool to boost somebody. Yeah, maybe Cena gets sent after Braun before the Fiend gets his hands on him. But I know that that's coming up at Money in the Bank, right? Right. So that doesn't exactly make sense. Um, or you could use it. Well, no, because Goldberg Goldberg's done. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was gonna say you could have. Bray turn and try to get his revenge off of Goldberg now where he says, well, now I'm mad so I'm going to come come get you. So, I know I've kind of talked talked all over the place so let me try and zone in. Oh, you're good. Uh, <laughs> I know where you're at it. Uh, so, I would, yeah, I would say yeah, Dark John Cena manipulated by the Fiend's mind games and he's sort of caught in a fog Maybe you have some more teasers over time after we introduce him where it's sort of John trying to fight out of it. I mean, I imagine you've got some time while this whole thing is going on before WWE is going to get to bring fans back in anyway, so they get to keep the, keep to these formats. Yeah. Well, I thought of something along to your thing. What if you have John go after Jeff Hardy? I'm listening. Jeff has has been. They did everything they could to bring him back and keep him. And he was originally supposed to get the title shot against Goldberg for the Universal title. And they're doing this whole thing about Jeff, like his recovery, yeah. his road back to the WWE. You can have the fiend kind of like, oh, you're a tormented soul. You're exactly what I need to. To come to my stable along with John. So you had Bray just start to try and pick off uh, damaged uh, legends for more for lack for lack of a better term. Yeah, and, and so he's just collecting them like trading cards. If I yeah. could, if I could interject with something, um, just to sort of spin off that idea, I wouldn't mind seeing the Fiend or Bray Wyatt trying to recruit Jeff, but because Jeff is supposed to be you know the baby face and all this. Uh, they sort of have a Firefly Funhouse esque type of match, uh, but somewhere in the middle of the match, you have John reveal himself to be like, as you said, Kamish, you know, sort of Bray Wyatt's, you know, follower, 
and winds up costing Jeff Hardy the match. As a way of, you know, Bray Wyatt saying, look what happened to John. I showed him, him I, sh- I showed him, you know, the, the, the true side to John Cena. I showed him, you know, who he really is, and I can do the same for you, Jeff. I mean, I, I would almost even, I, I know we've got a lot of these supernatural schizophrenic characters floating around right now. Yeah. But, uh, like, we, we've, never, we've never seen Willow in WWE, right? Oh, no, we haven't. So you could bring, you could bring in, Jeff, you could have babyface Jeff, since I think that's kind of the thing. Like, Bray, both sides of Bray are kind of, um, kind of heelish. Yeah. You've got the cowardly funhouse Bray, and you've got the absolutely dark fiend. Uh, Finn Balor, you had him and the Demon King, and they're both whatever the hell alignment he is. Meanwhile, you could take Jeff. You could introduce Willow. Willow could be it's like a sadistic heel side of him, while Jeff Jeff remains the, the baby face, and I think that'd be an interesting way to approach Jeff. Yeah. But I think that that, the, the, that could be an interesting plot line for us to follow, is if you have Babyface Jeff being uh, pursued and assaulted and tormented by uh, Bray and Dark Cena, and he has to he has to tap into Willow, and Willow is more of a defense mechanism. It's more of a an immune system than anything else. Uh, it's not him. Yeah. And so I th- I think that that would be a fun way to explore explore that. Because you still explore that dark dimension to to John, where like. He's being told what to do by the fiend, but yet you have Jeff who's like, no, like you don't belong here. You need to come back, you know, t- to reality. And if all sense to introduce Willow in, like as maybe that being the only thing that can stop the fiend. Yeah. But you would have to carry this on for like a good while. I was just going to say, um, had Matt Hardy not been released... Um, he could have been essentially what John Cena is to Bray Wyatt in this circumstance, where you know Matt Hardy is trying to be the yeah. one. What was that? Or, oh, well, th- th- that's that's what I was saying. Was you know how you know the Fiend has uh, John Cena as the storyline progresses, Jeff Hardy would have you know woken Matt Hardy, you know, in his full glory. So yeah. any any time when you know Dark Cena tries to step in, you have you know Woken Matt right there, you know backing Jeff up essentially. John, <laughs> wake up, come back, yeah, it's wonderful. Go into the multiverse. I, I think I, I think by, if you go in that angle, like you have Matt being like the potential savior for Jeff. That would exactly. Work too. Because what Woken Matt it is technically what saved Bray Wyatt at one point, right? Yeah. But yeah, you, really, you could have sort of treated Willow like Venom in a way, where it's sort of the symbiotic darkness, and okay. it, could have, it could have started to to screw with Jeff's brain, and then Matt would have been his anchor point. Oh, I'd like that, but of course, right now we have Matt talking to. Is freaking a drone or Vanguard One, as he calls it. <laughs> I mean, that's been the name of his drone. <laughs> Vanguard. Yeah. yeah I like that. That's a strange bird. <laughs> I, I mean, I like this. I like that angle. I, I would leave like, you know, Dark Cena like to a point where it's like he just does whatever he can to protect the fiend or to protect Bray. Yeah. But he's still under the control whether... Well, okay, so uh, another thing to kind of throw into that, there there was videos saying that we finally saw somebody as Sister Abigail. Not just the puppet anymore. That someone what? called like a, like a pausing, like one second shot of Sister Abigail in a rocking chair. We could say Sister Abigail controls Dark Cena for the Fiend. But who's Sister Abigail? There are plenty of people you can rehire to play her right now. Or Nikki <laughs> Cross is right there. But would you separate her from uh, Alexa Bliss? 
this would have to be after when yeah they break up. I still I still believe that a betrayal is possibly on the way, like from Alexa Bliss to Nikki Cross, and that's what allows Nikki to sort of embrace her dark side again. The twisted sister of WWE, as her nickname was in NXT. I I I like Dan's looking. I really do. Yeah, I I think he's right. You know, at this point, uh, everybody is kind of playing with that second alter ego, or most superstars are. So if you could just grab, I was going to say the the four of them, but Matt Hardy's no longer in the company. If you just grab the three of them and really also give some creative control to them, I think you can have, uh, you know, a long, extensive feud with these three. And really, Jeff works out in any rivalry. Yeah, he does. And I just think back to that championship scramble match. <laughs> Oh, it was a good match. Good match. WrestleMania 37 Championship Scramble. Jeff don't Hardy. even don't even get me excited. <laughs> 2K21 Championship Scramble return. Oh wait, we're not gonna get a 2K21. Ooh. Sorry, Dan. Is it is oh. it official or is it still just him kind of talking about it? Uh, they're. Just just kind of talking about it, but that game and that game developer guy who worked on the road to WrestleMania, it seems like everybody is banking on all of his videos. So I don't know. We'll just have to see. So uh, I mean, I'm not holding my breath. So so we see in one instance John becoming a puppet or John being a minion to the fiend. John, what's your interesting take on? John Cena's career. Well, um, a lot of this for you personally, Kamish, might be a bit repetitive because we kind of talked about this, but I kind of tuned it up and I kind of finited it. So uh, while it seems like the both of you have uh, have it booked right now for Cena to turn heel right now, I kind of went a few years back to their first match. Um, and uh, if it sounds like I'm reading off of a script, I am because I have this all written out. So I'm just I'm going to go through it. So here's how I would do it, uh, booking John Cena to be heel. So, WrestleMania 30. Towards the closing of the match, John Cena caves and takes Bray Wyatt's suggestion of quote-unquote finishing him with the steel chair. John swings the chair and hits Wyatt square in the face. Breaking his moral code of being a face, he turns heel and portrays a new side of himself. Raw after WrestleMania. Usually after WrestleMania, the first Raw is usually groundbreaking and filled with exciting moments. Cena walks out to the ring and declares that he's quote-unquote taking over. He promises to reveal a new stable that that he will lead. While in a WrestleMania rematch with Wyatt on Raw, in a moment where Wyatt seems to be in danger of losing the match, Rowan and Harper jump in the ring, beating up John. Moments go by, the Shield's music hits. They walk through the crowd, get in the ring, reigniting their rivalry with the Wyatts. However, this time after the Shield leave the Wyatts laying, they reveal to be the stable that Cena had referred to earlier in the show. This is the beginning of what Cena reveals to be a revolution. From here, Cena stays a leader, taking a less heavy schedule being a wrestler and more time having the Shield do his dirty work. He only wrestles sporadically and far in between. Cena begins to target those superstars who, at the time, were trying to find success, such as Daniel Bryan, who has become champion, Cesaro, who recently won the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. As Survivor Series approaches, many superstars get tired of being beat up by Cena and The Shield. What originally wound up being the storyline between The Authority and Team Cena now turns into Team Cena versus Team WWE, being the superstars who were left laying by John Cena and The Shield. Survivor Series 2014. It's set. One of the biggest matches in history. Team Cena versus Team WWE. I was thinking of it possibly being Team Cena, consisting of John Cena, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, and Seth Rollins, versus Team WWE. Daniel Bryan, Cesaro obviously, Ryback, and Dolph Ziggler. Uh, The match plays out. We're down to John Cena left on his team and Daniel Bryan left on his team. The referee gets knocked out. John orders the entire shield to come in the ring uh, and, jump, and jump the barricade. 
The four of them start beating up Daniel Bryan. The lights go out. Sting arrives. Sting takes out the shield. It's a stare down between Sting and Cena. Sting hits the Scorpion Death Drop, puts Bryan over Cena. The referee counts to three. Team WWE wins. From the night after Survivor Series all the way to the night before WrestleMania 31, Cena and his stable take care of business as usual. John feels like he has gotten past everyone except the one who cost him the match at Survivor Series. He challenges Sting to a one-on-one -on -one match at WrestleMania. Sting accepts, and the match is set. In the build-up to WrestleMania 31, Sting cuts a few promos indicating that he took out the hottest faction in the world in the NWO, and now he will do the same with Cena and The Shield. Cena also refers that Sting is nothing more than a beaten-up old veteran who can't hang the, in the ring anymore. WrestleMania 31 Before the match, Cena is seen backstage with The Shield and tells them clearly that he needs to do this match alone, without any interferences. The Shield agrees. Finally, the time has come. Sting vs. John Cena. Midway through the match, the referee gets knocked unconscious. In a heelish move, John Cena orders the Shield to come out. The Shield jump the barricade. They all stand in different sides of the apron surrounding a beaten up Sting. Seconds later, the NWO's theme song hits. Hollywood Hogan, Scott Hall, and Kevin Nash walk down to the ramp. A ring, um, at ringside, there is a big stare down between all six men. A punch is thrown, and there is a melee at ringside. Cena gets distracted. Sting capitalizes by hitting Cena with three stinger splashes and finally drops him with the Scorpion Death Drop, pins Cena, and wins the match. After WrestleMania 31, Cena and The Shield remain a unit. However, small cracks begin to form in various moments. Um, during certain moments, it is thrown at in Cena's face that he couldn't win against an old beaten-up veteran such as Sting. From this point, crowd reaction becomes key. Depending on who gets cheered, they get a push away from the group. By WrestleMania 32, it would depend on who has gone the most reaction from the fans, whoever that may be from The Shield. They have, um, have them face John Cena in an almost leader versus follower match. Results can go either way, and you book out from there. That's how I would do it. Very thorough. I yeah. dig it. Yeah, go ahead, Dan. I said I, I, said I dig it. Yeah, I mean, uh, anybody who's good with their uh, wrestling storyline history, yeah, pretty much a lot of the elements um, is, is what happened in real life, you know, such as Sting and Survivor Series, but... Um, I sort of wanted to make sure that whoever Sting or whoever Cena had targeted was someone who was trying to, you know, climb up that success or trying to climb up that ladder to success, essentially. Like, you could have even had it where, you know, because I, I kind of followed along the lines of yours as well, but I, I did my research of what happened during that time. You could have it that in order to ensure the Shield's power they completely take out Evolution. Yeah, there's that, that point, too. Yep. You had Evolution reforming and trying to gain momentum, but you would have to have Rollins, Ambrose, and Reigns just destroy them. Though. Yeah, in convincing fashion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's me. So, yeah, would, would, would you push certain things in history further forward in time how so like obviously you could push reigns winning a royal rumble later on in time and instead of being like booed out of the stadium he goes over because it would be the right place and right time for reigns yeah, like I said uh, in the last few sentences, um, after WrestleMania 31, crowd reaction would, would be key. Like, it would just depend on who um, the, you know, the crowd goes for. Because if they start cheering for Reigns, I think that's a natural, you know, thing. As opposed to trying to shove it down everybody's throat and, you know, forcing him to win a Rumble. So, well, Would you have Bray Wyatt try to, like, interfere with Cena's new faction? I wouldn't because Bray Wyatt leaves the match that he had with Cena protected because he got Cena to cave. Um, and I would just have, you know, Wyatt, you know, finding his own success. 
Cause, uh, like with other people? Yeah, because when you think about it, I believe it was Royal Rumble and Elimination Chamber of that year where they had um, the six-man match between the Shield and the Wyatt family. I wouldn't want to, you know, put so much overexposure on, you know, Wyatt's and Shield, Wyatt's and Shield, Wyatt's and Shield. So I would like, give those guys a break. Wyatt start targeting other people. Yeah, exactly. I like it. So, yeah. Did you say you had a you had another one? Well, mine was similar along the lines of yours, so that's why like I I, I thought of my other one because the only thing is like I, I would have just like kind of showed people what would have happened to like Ambrose and Reigns and Rollins. Like we'd still eventually get the heist of the century. We'd get Romans winning the Rumble, and we get Ambrose winning TLC. Yeah, and like their their careers individually would still take off, but it would be because of the fact that at one point they realized they needed a turn on John. Yeah, like I, I would want there to be the momentum of like, all right, well, I brought you into this, I can take you all out, but they all go over. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it would have been it would have been a, a very impactful way to utilize to utilize John to put over the new talent. Exactly. As opposed to his usual tactics of using a shovel. <sighs> I mean, here's the thing, and I'm going to ask the both of you this. Do you guys think that it would have made more sense to, like, if you pre- if you introduced these ideas to Vince, do you think he would have played ball on any of them? No. Because of how much he loves John Cena? No. I mean... I, I think he's always been too scared. What to take a risk? To 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 uh, slaughter his cash cow. But his cash cow would produce even more if this happened, don't you think? He produced a different type of milk, <laughs> and I don't know if Vin, Vince was thirsty for it. So, what do you think? I personally don't think so. Um... Honestly, in any of these three scenarios, yeah, I, I, I really don't think so. Cause I'll just say this: I don't know Vince personally, but it seems like with age, his, his uh, vision has become tunnel vision, where he thinks that the out of date, you know, potty humor and you know, fifty fifty booking, you know, is still what everybody wants to see when it's not. Um, yeah, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, you know, yeah, there are moments where he does take a gamble, you know, and it does work out. Sometimes it doesn't. But especially with Cena, you know, I mean, this guy has more talent on his roster right now than he's ever had. And he doesn't use it. He doesn't bother to use it. You know, when there is a natural build, like a Rusev day or... Um, Cesaro. Cesaro, you know, when someone is naturally there and, and it's time to pull the trigger, for whatever reason, Vince gets cold feet and goes, now nah, let's just stick to, to, to tradition. That, that's going to work it, out. It's because right. it, the man's got a God complex. He does, we, we've kind of touched on the fact before that he doesn't like things he didn't create. Well, grow up. Well, <laughs> Dan, uh, to throw a wrench into your plans, Goldberg... Goldberg, the the I, I'll say Goldberg is pro is probably one of the one of the few exceptions because Goldberg just Goldberg is 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 money. Yeah. The the name is money. Uh, so he's he's leeching on to something that so, that someone else created that's guaranteed. Even though he screwed or, up the first time around. Well, yeah, he he screwed the pooch. Yeah, but. The Saudi Arabian prince still likes him. Along with Yokozuna. The Saudi Arabian prince likes a bunch of other things that are not around anymore either. Well, Kamish, what do you think? You think Vince would go along with any of these ideas? He would only go along with what's current. And he knows the fiend is bringing in money. That's the Vince. only way. Right. He wouldn't go with exactly the way we would book it, like me and Dan, but he would give 
the feet, he would give Bray Wyatt control. That's a for sure. It's just, I don't think he would trust everyone else involved. I mean, if the man's willing to concede the, that Vince McMahon puppet to Bray. <laughs> yeah, that, I still am shocked about that. Well, I mean, to bring up a point, you know, you talk about, you know, making money, you know, because he knows that the, the fiend essentially is money. I question why we wouldn't give someone like Rusev a chance where the chants are there, the support is there, the charisma is there. You know, why not take a chance? Rusev could be bringing in a whole lot more money into the company, but because you keep on backtracking and going, no, not yet. No, I don't think so. No, let's hold off on it. You know, like you, you, you never know, you know, type of thing. So it's because the Russians are heels. Damn it. <laughs> you never believe in Kozlov. Okay. I mean, I never believe, I never believe in Kozlov. So, <laughs> okay. Then you go to plan B hashtag push the Nathan Jones. Oh, Dan, not helping. <laughs> wow. That was far back. <laughs> The murder. Okay. So okay. So let me throw this wrench into the into the fucking situation. What if you had Triple H running things finally, like starting in oh, what's a good year? Two thousand fourteen. All control has been handed to the uh, son-in-law. But I mean, all control. Do you think half of these, if not all of these? What if scenarios would have actually come to light? I think the company would be in better shape. Yeah. <laughs> um, all of it. A lot of our, a lot of our favorite NXT superstars would have had successful uh, runs on the on the main roster. Yeah. Okay. And, I mean, I was just gonna say with Triple H, I feel like he actually works with the talent. So when you take what we have with the Fiend and you just multiply it, again, it's like Dan said, you, you know, those NXT stars would be a whole lot more successful. I think Triple H could probably get credit for Vince McMahon patching things up with a lot of these superstars. You know, Bruno San Martino and Ultimate Warrior and Jeff Jarrett, you know, because even Triple H one time in an interview said, you know, a lot of times it's just miscommunication. Something is said, it gets, you know, blown out of proportion, and then it's a he said, she said type of thing, and, you know, the the plot thickens. Um, but I think Triple H is kind of that guy who goes, hey, look, these guys have broke their back for you in due time. Let's give them their spot, you know? So, I don't know. Any closing remarks about Cena's heel turn? It needs to happen. For The Rock. No, be- no better time than, uh, you know, the present. <laughs> yes, we would like to see it, even though we can't see him. Would we finally see him for who he really is? You Maybe see- that's part of the pitch. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Get it? All right. Yes. Um, (laughs) there you go, guys. Uh, so we all just fantasy booked about, you know, how we would, uh, book Cena's heel turn. Um, let us know in the comment section below, uh, if you guys have a fantasy storyline, uh, of Cena turning heel that you would pitch, leave it in the comment section below. Let us know what you guys think. Uh, once again, thank you for joining us. Stay home, stay safe, and we'll catch you guys all next time.